Hello friends, in the last video we have seen how to decompose acceleration of an object when this is moving on a curved path. Basically there was two approach. In the first approach what you can do is you can decompose the total acceleration in Cartesian coordinate system that is one along the x axis and other along the y axis. That is a typical approach for decomposing the acceleration. But when you have an object that is moving on a curved path, it is a good idea to decompose the acceleration vector in radial and tangential direction. What that mean? That means like you have to decompose the acceleration in direction of velocity or in a parallel direction to velocity and perpendicular direction to the velocity. For example, let's say if I have an object and this object is moving on this path. So this is path on which object is more moving and certain point of time this object is here. So this is object P and this is moving so I can basically know what is the direction of velocity. Direction of velocity is tangent to the path. So this is the direction of velocity. Now this object will have some acceleration. Now let's say acceleration is in this direction. So this is the total acceleration of this object. Now this is the direction of velocity and we can think of another axis that is perpendicular to this velocity vector. So this is a axis that is perpendicular to this velocity vector. So one axis is along the velocity, another axis that is perpendicular to the velocity vector. Now what I am saying, now I can decompose this acceleration. So this is my acceleration vector and I can decompose this acceleration one along the velocity and other perpendicular to the velocity. So now this is parallel to velocity and this is acceleration component perpendicular to the velocity. So we have basically decomposed acceleration into two components, parallel components and perpendicular component. What actually they signify? Basically parallel components tells you about the change in a speed. So this tells you about change in a speed. Similarly, perpendicular components, this tells you about change in direction. For example, if you have an object and this object is moving in a straight line. In this case, I can say there is no change in the direction. This means perpendicular component of acceleration is zero in this case. So if an object is moving in a straight line, I can say perpendicular component is equals to zero. Similarly, if a object is moving in a circle, for example, this is the circle in which the object is moving. What happens in this case? The speed does not changes, the magnitude of velocity does not changes, but the direction changes at this point, this is the direction of velocity, at this point, this is the direction of velocity. So the direction of velocity changes. So I can say in this case, the parallel component of acceleration is equals to zero because there is no change in the speed. but perpendicular will not be zero because in that case there is a change in the direction. Now we will illustrate all this using a problem. So this problem says a skier moves along a sky jump ramp as shown in the figure. The ramp is straight from point A to point C and curved from point C onwards. So this is the skier and she tried to make a, a sky jump on this ramp that is something like this. So this ramp has two portion, one is curved portion, another is a straight portion. So question says point A to point C, this is the straight portion. The sky speeds up as she moves downhill from point A to point E. So as she is going from point A to point E, there is an increase in the speed. So she speeds up where her speed is maximum and point E, this point is 
maximum speed so at point e i can say here c has maximum speed so speed is maximum at this point c slows down So she slows down after passing the point E. After passing point E, her speed decreases. Draw the direction of acceleration vector at each of the points that is B, D, E, F. So what is given in this problem? So we have been given from A to C that is a straight path. So this is a straight, that is one thing. And C to F that is basically curved path. And it is also given maximum speed is at E and when he is going or she is going from A to C there is an increase in the speed and not only A to C up to E basically there is an increase in the speed and then after this there is a decrease in the speed. We have to show the acceleration vector at different points. So let us first consider at point B. So what will be the direction of acceleration vector? at point B. So at point B, so portion A to C, that is this portion, is a portion of a straight line. There is no change in the direction. So as I said, if there is no change in the direction of velocity, perpendicular component is equals to zero. So what we will have? We will have only parallel component of acceleration will exist. This means at point B, the acceleration vector will be in the direction of velocity. That is, I can say at this point, acceleration is in this direction. So acceleration is same direction, acceleration is in the same direction as the velocity because perpendicular component is zero. There is no perpendicular component. Now let us consider point D, E, F. So at point D, E, and F. So now first consider point D. So at point D there is an increase in the speed. So we will have a speed is increasing. So we will have parallel component. What about perpendicular component? This will not be zero because there is a curved path and the direction of velocity is also changing. So at point D, you have some component of acceleration that is parallel and you also have some component of acceleration that is perpendicular. So this is basically also direction of normal. So this is the normal direction. So if you take the resultant of these two, you will have something like this. So this is the total vector at point D. So you see, at point T, I can say acceleration is ahead of the normal. So this is my normal and acceleration is somewhere here. So I can say acceleration in this case is ahead of the normal. So A vector is ahead of normal. So this is what I can say for point D. So this is for point D. What about point E? At point E, a speed is maximum. So there is no change in the speed. So if there is no change in the speed, I can say the parallel component of acceleration is equals to zero. But perpendicular component of acceleration will still be there. So what will be the direction? Once again, this is the normal direction. So in this case, I will have acceleration that is along this direction because parallel component is zero so we will only have one component that is perpendicular component and that will be along the normal so this is acceleration vector at point e so i can say in this case a is the acceleration vector is along the normal so this is along the normal what about point f so let us find acceleration at point F. Now at point F, there is a decrease in a speed. So speed is decreasing. So we will have parallel component because the speed is decreasing. So we will have parallel component. 
so parallel component will be there what about perpendicular component perpendicular component will also be there because direction at f is changing because this is a curved path so direction is also changing so we will have perpendicular component as well as parallel component so this is similar to situation d only difference we have at point d there is a speed up at point f there is a speed decreasing so slowing down so what will happen in this case so this has a so this is the direction of normal so this has a perpendicular component but this is slowing down so acceleration will be in the backward direction so if you take resultant of these two it will come something in this direction so this is the resultant acceleration at point f so now i can say at point f basically acceleration is behind the normal so this is my normal at this point and this is acceleration vector so i can say acceleration is behind the normal so acceleration is behind the normal vector so in this video we learned how to show the direction of acceleration of an object when this object is moving on a curved path basically there are two component parallel component and perpendicular component parallel component tells about the change in the speed and perpendicular component tells about change in the direction now we have seen if i have object in a straight line in that case the perpendicular component will be zero that is point b point d e and f these are moving on a curved path so we will have normal as well as tangential component of acceleration at point e that is a special case in that case a speed is not changing and that's why the parallel component is zero in some cases for example in point d the acceleration vector is ahead of the normal and at point f the acceleration vector is behind the normal I hope you enjoyed this video and if you enjoy please share with your friends and I will see you in the next video thank you